Good morning and good afternoon, everybody. I see we have some folks joining now. Um, we'll give it just a moment for allowing everyone to filter in. Um, it's a beautiful morning, get a little sip of coffee or water, whatever you like. We're gonna get started in about 30 seconds to a minute and we'll start with introductions for Phil Richter and Jim Mercurio. Okay, it looks like we're slowing down on those joining. So I'm gonna, gonna go ahead and kick us off. Good morning again. My name is Morgan Butterfield. I work in marketing at Cumulo. And today I am joined by Bill Richter and Jim Mercurio. Um, we're gonna start off with introductions today. We're really glad to have you joining us to hear this amazing story about the 49ers and Levi Stadium. Um, so I'm gonna pass it over to our guest first to introduce himself, Jim Mercurio. Good morning, everybody. I'm Jim Mercurio. I'm the Executive Vice President and General Manager uh, of Levi Stadium for the San Francisco 49ers, straight off of a, an exciting win on Monday Night Football last night. So partner with The Voice. Yes, thank you, Steve. I appreciate that. Uh, I'm a little, uh, I don't want to say hungover because I didn't drink last night, but I feel like uh, I've been run over by a Mack truck a little bit. Uh, those Monday Night games can kind of take it out of you, but uh, absolutely great win and happy to be here with you. Uh, Bill, I'll turn it to you. Uh, hey, thanks, Jim. My name is Bill Richter. I'm the CEO and president of Cumulo. Um, just delighted to be here um, with you, Jim. And yes, absolute great win, Th 31 to 10. I, I, I think, think. I, I think that's what it ended up with. Yes, it yeah. was. Uh, it was pretty dominating win. So uh, at, at this point in time, it, if it was 31 30, I, it would be just fine by me, right? <laughs> it's been a while since we had a few home wins at uh, Levi's, so it's good. Well. Nothing like uh, Monday night football um, on your home field and a decisive win. Uh, of course, we, we, we don't have any bias here um, with <laughs> the NFL teams, um, but great to see a win, particularly given our guest here. Well, and, and um, you know, speak it, I mean, this, that's probably a great place to start, um, Jim. I mean, you know, there's only one game on Monday nights and all, all football fans are watching it. Um, Tell us a little bit about your role and um, and your, your kind of sphere of, of responsibility for, for running the stadium. Sure, happy to do it. Uh, this is my 28th full-time year with the San Francisco 49ers. Um, and as the executive VP and GM of the building, I'm ultimately responsible for most, if not all, that takes place on game day, right? And so when you look at, uh, from a security perspective, all of the security coordination with the event staff, security staff, uh, the coordination of the San Fran Santa Clara Police Department and all of the different agencies that are in and around uh, the inner workings and outside workings of Levi Stadium, including parking and transportation and traffic operations. Uh, field, grounds crew, engineering, staff, guest services, stadium operations and logistics. So that really touches, and food and beverage, right? So all of those game day operations, um, you know, there's many, many people that do all those works uh, and all those different individual jobs, but uh, kind of the orchestrator and trying to get 3,500 people to beat to the same drum, so to speak. Well, that sounds like um, actually a pretty daunting job. Um, and I bet you that the fans and the, and the ownership and the players are all happy to have you do it. Um, Jim, um, you know, one thing that we've observed here at Cumulo is that um, surprisingly over the last say decade, places that you would never consider data factories have become data factories. And, um, and, and, and for sure a stadium itself um, has become a factory of data um, and, and with, with incredible production levels. And um, certainly we've all uh, been accustomed to watching the games on TV and the great video and technology that's intertwined with the kind of television viewing experience. But at the stadium itself, um, there's an enormous amount of data and particularly video um, that is captured. Can, can you just share a little bit about what, what that looks like for you and, and what is it and, and maybe how it's evolved over just the last couple of years? Oh, absolutely. And in fact, if you allow me, I'll take you back to the days at Candlestick Park, right? Where I used to... Okay. <clears throat> where I started, right? Um, when you looked at Candlestick and, and uh, 
it has its own character. Both buildings are extremely different. Uh, but when you look at what Candlestick Park had to offer, great seats in the house. Every seat in the house was fantastic. Concourses were tight. Um, entry gates were tight. But you tore tickets, right? You, if you, you, you tore parking passes. You sent your payments uh, in uh, with checks. And we had to hand process 7,000 checks for $240 a piece for each parking uh, pass or, uh, you know, you waited in line to when the tickets uh, went on sale and you had lines around the corner. None of that happens anymore because you're able to use technology in such a way uh, to make the consumer experience much, much better, right? So when you look at uh, how to make a phone call uh, on, a, on a cell in a, on a cell phone back in 1994 when I started, or a text message, which was, you know, we all had beepers on our belts, right? Sometimes those text messages would go through, sometimes they wouldn't. And it was all based on bandwidth and technology and, and, and how that was state of the art at the time, but it was still clunky, right? I'd leave the stadium two hours at the end of the kickoff and I'd start getting text messages a half a mile away from the stadium that were sent in the second or third quarter, right? Fast forward to today, when you look at um, being able to, let's start dri the driveway to driveway experience for our fans, right? When you leave uh, your home, you are likely on some sort of a device that's telling you, uh, okay, I'm going, to, I'm going to blue lot one today. I'm going to green lot one. How do I get there? And so there's some sort of technology that is supporting, you know, uh, Google Maps, for example, where, where you're going. And then when you get to the parking lot, I'm scanning your phone uh, or uh, your credit card at the gate. That wasn't possible years and years ago, right? So we had to have the infrastructure that supports all of that. And so on a security level, just think about, um, and if I'm going off track here, Bill, tell me. But, but No, I'm keep, loving it. And right. we're going we're, we're to keep diving deeper. Keep okay, so when you look at... Uh, the concerns that a security provider would have back in the day, when you're looking at 7,000 cars that would be parking in one lot, say much less 20,000 cars, you had 7,000 cars collecting 20, 30, 40, $50 in cash. Where's that cash going? And how are you managing that security issue? How do you, how are you managing that threat? So you had organized cash drops, right? Well, when you have technology now involved, I don't have that security threat as much. I have a different threat, right? There's some potential threat with PCI compliance and you've got, uh, you know, debit card and credit card issues. Sometimes you've got threats, you know, uh, cyber uh, concerns, which are all real, but they're, they're so much more tighter and much more controlled. So when you don't have all that cash at the gates, that's awesome. But go back to the technology is I get to scan your ticket. So it's much more consumer friendly. It's customer service scores go through the roof at the same time i'm now being i'm able to understand what that data tells me that it might not necessarily tell me that bill is coming to the game today but somebody on bill's tickets has arrived and and gives me an understanding that there could be two people to three or four people in their car so i understand how many people are arriving which gives me some you know understanding of how many people are actually coming when i get to the gates now and we go through your security profile and, we, and we, we have the technology we need at the gates to be able to support that. And the turnstiles that are scanning your ticket from your mobile phone, oh, by the way, that tells me again, my next wave of people from the parking lot into the stadium, how many people we're processing and how quickly are we processing. Um, what that tells me is, all right, how many people, I can look at trends, how many people are there? Do we have the concession stands ready for people? Do we have the restrooms ready for, for everybody when the gates open? Do you have redeployments of staff because you've got people more heavily concentrated in one lot versus another? So all of this happens as a result of technology. Technology years ago, we didn't have, and I had to rely on either my experience or just some trends and some gut instinct now I, I still use trends and gut instinct, but I have actual data that helps me verify um, you know, my gut instincts in many cases. Um, and, and as a fan, and, and we all go to different um, experiences from a movie theater to an NFL game, I mean, I, I'll second the technology has made the experience so much more elegant. Jim, um, 
Cumulo partnered up with the 49ers um, about six months ago. And um, the initial use case was helping your organization manage the vast amount of video surveillance at the stadium. And um, nowadays, we tend to call video surveillance really physical security. Um, and what we've seen is everything from K through 12 school districts to universities to large scale venues um, revolutionize the way that they use video. Um, you know, I think we all kind of remember the what I'd call like the 7-Eleven camera experience. It was sort of black and white and blurry and it you could sort of make snowball, things snowballs out. everywhere in there. Yeah. Yeah. On a VCR, yeah. on a VCR, mind you, right? Right. And, um, you know, a few things have come together. Um, one, the, the resolution of the cameras, the, the cost of the cameras has all, the resolution's gone up, the costs have gone, come down. Um, the desire of society to, to feel more secure and then, of course, um, underlying that is um, an enormous amount of unstructured data in the form of, in this case, in the form of video. Um, maybe just tell us a little bit about um, specifically about what, um, how you're using video surveillance at the stadium and, and, and maybe even some, if you don't mind showing off some of the specs on how much and how many and, 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 and so on. I think it, it's pretty yeah. fascinating when you get into it. Yeah, well, let me first say um, there's a, there's been a couple, and we'll, we're going to look at uh, our partnership with you guys in a couple different ways. One of which was phase one. We're into phase two a little bit, but phase one was we had all this history, uh, photos and video and all of this stuff that was just all over the place. Mm -hmm. And 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 you had to you know remember this passcode here, this here, oh, and there was just, it was just so. My apologies. Um, you, you had so many different uh, items uh, that we uh, you had to track and had to gain access to, and then it was it just was so clunky. Not the least of which is if we lost. Can you imagine losing any of that data? Any of those those his, the historic photos, for example, games, uh, uh, tape, player, coaches, video, all of that stuff is archived uh, and imagine if you lost that, uh, what that does to your agency, what that does to your team and to your organization. So um, we were able to move that over. In, in moving that, I had a room, and, uh, you know, I, I don't know what the size of the room, but let me just tell you the amount of space that you helped us free up was un, unmatched. I mean, it was six, seven, uh, uh, I'm just blanking on the uh, rack. Uh, yeah, that we we were able to um, free up, and for a number of reasons, right? It allows us now. Imagine now I have all this tape, this space, these empty racks that I can now do a lot more with. Whether it's with you or with somebody else, that's your way of contributing to our success is being able to downsize that smarter less space, less expensively, that's a win-win-win for everybody. And so for me, what we started to do is, all right, what can I now look at in terms of having additional resources? What else can I do? And I think if anybody out there listening uh, as why why we chose you, that's, that's one of the main reasons why we chose you, you guys to partner with, because it just made sense for us. And imagine what uh, others can do as a result of what you've been able to accomplish in your technology to allow us to do that. So that's kind of my, that's one of my exciting things. And people don't see this, right? This, you know, oftentimes in my world, people don't understand nor see the efforts that we make, right? I don't, I'm not a revenue generating arm of the company, so to speak. On occasion, there's a few, but outside of food and beverage, but for the most part, I'm a cost center, right? Security is a cost center. Operations is a cost center. You can save money and you can raise your revenues by a result of making decisions like we made with you guys uh, to help us raise the bottom line. But, it, but on a security perspective, nobody sees that stuff. It's all behind the scenes, but you guys are playing such a great role for us to be able to, uh, to secure our event. I, I, you know, I won't get into 
and I don't want to tell all the guys and gals out there, there there's some, there's some, you don't want to tell the bad guys, so to speak, what it is we're doing in some in cases with video surveillance, but we have close to over 800 cameras in this place. We have 40 miles of fiber uh, that could string. I mean, that's imagine from a, a fiber strung from San Francisco to Santa Clara running through this building, right? We were among the first, uh, I think it's 40 terabytes of data going in and around this building all day long. And so it's massive. Um, and to your point, it's no longer just a place to go watch a football game. There are so many other ways that fans and customers uh, really demand access uh, outside of it, outside of the game or inside of the game, however, depending on how you look at it. Well, that, um, um, as you started talking there, that um, first step we see very commonly amongst our customers, they, they find themselves in a situation that as time has passed, data, uh, data has been sharded and siloed and is strewn about and being able, the first step of being able to consolidate it into a single place and do that elegantly um, is a huge step. Um, and then what we often see is customers go, okay, now what, now that I have it all together, what are the interesting things I, I can do with it? Um, so you're not alone in that kind of journey. Um, and we hear that a lot from the customer base. Um, we, we've seen uh, video surveillance become an enormous, or physical security become an enormous uh, use case for our products. And, um, and it, as you said, it's sort of underneath the radar. You know, people don't think about a lot and that's probably best. We don't want people worried about that. But, um, you know, I, one, one thing I, 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 um, I thought was interesting is, you know, there's this kind of concept of physical security, sort of like bad guy uh, sort of scenario, but, but there's other stuff like, um, you know, I mean, when you have 50, 60 plus thousand fans in a place, you know, someone might be having a, a medical issue. Uh, I'm glad you brought this. I'm glad you brought this up, Bill. You're absolutely correct. It's not just about, you know, a lot of times people think security or camera systems are are just for the bad guys, or it's just for uh, security security related incident. It's not, and I and I can tell you that uh, as early as last, just as you know, yesterday, um, and and almost every single game. You got to remember whether it's my stadium or somebody else's, it's almost, it's akin to a small city within a city, right? So I get 70,000 people here. Not everybody's going to get along, right? You, that never, you can't go to a Thanksgiving dinner anymore where your family's getting along, much less 70,000 sometimes, right? But you, when you look at, when you look at the different types of incidents that take place, you've got calls for service from, from an usher. So imagine now the ability to get a, a radio call uh, that says, I have a potential issue brewing in section 109. Well, we can now take that camera and we can look at it. All right, so we have an issue. We can actually get now eyes and ears on it from a distance. I can zoom in, for example, on the back of a seat and read the seat number, right? I can zoom. I have the technological advancements of of camera systems that can, you know, tell me what the traffic is like. Uh, I can control signals from my command post. In the event that hey, we, we see someone here that doesn't look like, uh, you know, something's not right. And, but I can get somebody that has a trained eye that says that person may be having a heart attack by view of a camera. So imagine being able to improve your response times for, for real life saving of people's lives. And, and I'm proud to tell you, uh, we do that all the time. You know, at the same time, sometimes we're not as fortunate. You know, we're not, we don't get to make those decisions sometimes, right? Those are made above us. Um, you, you, it just, it was the time. But the fact of the matter is, video surveillance has done a tremendous uh, amount of things for us that we never really had before in the past. I'll give you one more. We, we have body cameras on that we use on a certain number of staff. And I jokingly said, uh, when I first saw one of the first responses coming back from it, I mean, who is the guy talking on the video? 
well, that's our employee and that's Bill. And I'm like, Bill, I've never heard Bill speak so eloquently before. So the, the, the un and I don't, I don't say this bill, but uh, it, it was an unintended consequence that the level of guest services that we provided to folks because they were on video, they were a little bit more conscious about the word selection they used, the approach that they took. So maybe they, as a security guard coming in, you didn't like them coming in too hot. Well, this kind of kind of cooled the jets a bit. It also did the same for fans. So most fans, I mean, still some fans would get a little bit too much to drink or something and might get a little bit more antagonistic, but it gave us the perspective. I can turn that camera on or off remotely. I can, I can just, there's so many things that I can do now in the arsenal uh, that help us a long way. And, and we just not, not having that capability in the past didn't make us bad operators. It just didn't exist at the time. So you're helping save lives in such, in, in a way, Bill, that you may not even know it. Well, I mean, that as somebody that loves to go and enjoy events like that, um, and I think I'd speak for, for all the, the, the folks that enjoy a good fan experience. It, it is really important. And, and, and I guess the, the next sort of area that I think becomes interesting is, um, you know, there's this sort of tactical, if someone's having a bad day and how, how can I get eyes on that quickly? Um, I, I imagine you can't employ, you said you had about 800 cameras. I imagine you can't employ 800 people to watch each camera. And so the ability to be able to um, quickly detect where they should be looking is important. Um, but also I'm sort of curious, I mean, what else can you do with it? I mean, um, can you look at crowd flow? Can you start sure. to make broader decisions about how you're running the stadium, um, um, whether it's operating concessions or thinking about how design is laid out? Or what, what else can you kind of do once you're able to consolidate all that information and, and analyze it? You hit it again right on the head. All of that is accurate, right? We're looking at customer service. So when you look at what your line, time in a line, right? You're always paying attention to that. If you look at the parking gates, there's time in a line. There's time in a, at your search entry gates, there's time in a line. When you look at uh, your ticket turnstiles, you're in a line. When you go to the restroom, you're in a line. Concession stands, you're in a line. So we're trying to eliminate some of that drag, so to speak, right? And so data and analytics allows you to do that sometimes. Video analytics allows you to do that. That says, hey, listen, just imagine if I drew a line on this concourse here that the camera said, when this came up here, you may want to start redu redirecting people to different areas. Uh, cameras can do that. Video analytics can help you do that. You can look at crowd flow. You can look at, uh, you know, being able to communicate to folks that say, hey, at this point in time, you're, it's going to take you X. If you go over two sections down the road, uh, it'll take you 15 minutes less. You know, being able to do stuff like that absolutely incredible uh and and we're we're pushing the limit uh on on how we can utilize that uh as best we can all all the time i mean levi stadium is known as one of the most technologically advanced stadium in the country if not the world um and but we're there's always others that are coming online that are learning from us and us from them and if we can push that data if we could push those limits uh we'd like to all in an effort uh to uh, you know, we kind of really focus on three things. I say all the time, people, process, and technology. And if those three things are not in harmony, uh, your technology is a little clunky, your, your, your process is a little funky, uh, it's going to affect your people and, uh, and your customer experience. So all those kind of have to be uh, aligned. And just getting technology for the sake of technology is not the right answer neither, right? It has to solve an issue for us. I don't want it to create five others, right? I want to be able to <laughs> and sometimes, you know, we look, we look at technology as being the end all be all, but you gotta be smart about that use. Right. And I think this is where you guys have come in and showed us uh, just on the storage piece alone, how we can be much smarter about that. Think about how effective now people can be when you have it stored appropriately and you can find things. How often are, uh, you know, are you searching? Employees are frustrated. They're searching. That's process. So when you can fix that process, they become a lot more effective and efficient. Well, we've seen, um, uh, you know, Cumulo services, also, I mean, broadly speaking, uh, you know, our role, mission in the world is help customers store, manage, and understand their unstructured data. And video is certainly an enormous 
subset of unstructured data. And we see it um, in venues like yours, but also again in universities, um, law enforcement. Um, and um, I've spoken myself to some of the law enforcement folks and they've said exactly uh, almost identical to what you said in, in terms of the use of body cameras. It actually in a positive way influences both the person that's wearing the body camera and, and, the, and the other person that's in front of the body camera. And it sort of, that was kind of a revelation that behavioral, behaviorally people might uh, sort of improve knowing that there's, there's eyes on them. Um, I, I want to ask you, you know, we, what we believe, um, the way, mind you, everyone has their own vantage point. And what, what we observed out there in the world was that organizations were spending way too much money on the storage layer of their infrastructure stack. And the issue was that most budgets have some sort of envelope to them. So it becomes some, something of a zero sum game. And if you're spending all of your money on storage, you could spend, you'd have left, less money left over for some of the other good stuff. Um, you know, if you overspent on storage, you couldn't have 800 cameras, you could only have 400 and that would reduce your operational capability or you'd have to buy the lower resolution cameras or you'd I be able to buy the not as good tooling. And, and we see analogs like um, when we serve as hospitals, for example, it's the same thing. If you, if you overspend on infrastructure, you can't buy the good MRI machine that you really want. And, and that might make the difference in a patient um, outcome. And we, we take that to heart as part of our issue. So we're constantly trying to drive economics and costs, both acquisition costs of, of the technology, but operational costs. I'm wondering, does that, is that in our mind or does that resonate with you? Is it from, from your side of the table, is that, is that sort of a fair representation? And what, what does that sort of equation look like to you? 100%, uh, it is absolutely uh, spot on. And here's why, I mean, when you look at, look at everybody has a budget. If you if if you don't, lucky you. Uh, and I would I would contend that you know you, you're probably not as focused on effective efficiency and things of that nature, right? So when you look at whether we all and we all have a decision to make, right? So as operators, as stadium operators especially, they're going to look at all right. I got to make a decision over here. Is it uh, you know? You, sometimes we're siloed within departments, right? You got yes, even within mine, right? You've got a guest services budget, you have a, a engineering budget, I have a grounds budget, I have a logistics budget, stadium ops budget, and security. Well, if I just let everybody stay within those, those verticals, and I didn't do any crossover uh, communication, Robin Peter to pay Paul sometimes, I'd be a fool, right? Because I know that security affects guest services and vice versa. I know that security touches engineering and grounds and logistics and operations and all those, every facet of it. A security guard or security camera is not just a security guard or camera. He or she has guest services responsibilities. They have, can you imagine if I didn't pay attention to the cyber side of security and engineering with lighting control systems and uh, video boards and uh, power. These are all security risks and threats that if somehow, some way those were infiltrated, that game day experience is uprooted. And then it becomes, uh, you know, a safety issue. Then it becomes a public relations issue. So you have to look at all of those things by making a, a formulated, formulated decision you're absolutely right. I don't want, I mean, sometimes I don't ever look at the stuff that I'm storing for ever, for a long, long time, but I need to have it for a number of reasons, right? There, if there is a, a lawsuit that comes down, you know, the statue is two years from filing a lawsuit, right? So a lot of times people wait to that very last day. If I don't have that incident and that video supporting that incident, I'm not going to remember the incident two years from now. I can't remember what I did Wait, wait, wait for lunch last night, much less two years down the road, right? So, uh, you know, I, I think when you look at how to, to make a decision like that, um, you, you, would, you would be better served knowing that you can improve your business by 
um, you know, making a, a sound decision about. And yes, storage was certainly one for us here that allowed me to buy you know, our DAS system, for example, to improve our DAS communication system or to be able to more laptops for the command post, for example, right? All of those things that give me a higher, quicker speed of input and output, all of that stuff matters. So I think, I think you're absolutely spot on. Hey, Jim, I, um, you know, you mentioned that um, Levi Stadium is one of the most technologically advanced in the, in the world. And um, I mean, look, it's right in the heart of Silicon Valley. Um, it, I, just curious, is there kind of a, given your, the locality of, of where you operate and the intersection with, I mean, that, that is um, the heart and soul of tech in, in the world in sure. many ways. Is there kind of a greater expectation on you that you're always going to be running the most advanced operation out there? Um, you know, we may we may put some of that on ourselves a little bit. Um, you know, everybody wants to be uh, showcasing the newest, greatest, and best. I, I will tell you, the first year or so, I think we made a mistake. I think we had to we had to go. Oh, we just heard about this. Let's go try that. Let's go do this. And then in that end of the first year, second year, that's when we really started to develop the mon the mantra that that said, "Hey, man, why are we doing this?" we have to be a little bit more selective. And like I said to you earlier, let's solve an issue. Let's not create a couple issues, right? The other piece I will tell you is oftentimes with the technology side of things, people, hey, I got these four modules you need. Well, I really only need one module. That's really, I need you to focus on. Well, I want you to buy these other three or four. Well, they, they don't serve a purpose for me. In the past, we might've just said, hey, it's a package deal, let's do it. Um, now we're a little bit more selective. I'll tell you, during the COVID side, um, it was some older technology where we, where you know, hospitals have been using this technology for years in disinfecting, for example, right? Uh -huh. And so I thought, gosh, you know, they're still doing operations. There's still there, there, there's something in there, and we stumbled upon some technology on UV, right? Huh. So the UV light kills on a micro, like on a micro uh, level, right? And so there was this technology that's been around for a long, long time, 50 plus years. It just never was used in a stadium environment. So that's kind of how our mindset is now. It is, hey, let's, let's not just leave it to sports and entertainment. What are they doing in other areas? Are they doing it in movie theaters? Are they doing it in hospitals? Are they doing it in data centers? What are they... What are you guys and gals doing out there that could help us? Again, we're just not in the sports and entertainment side, but that was a way that we looked at it. But I mean, back to your original question. Yeah, there's a little bit of that, you know, I mean, but it also helpful, right? Because people say, hey, I'm in your backyard so I can beta test. It also takes a, 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 an attitude like that. You got to, sometimes people just don't want to be the first at it. I don't, hey, Mercurio, you go do that in San Francisco. I'll wait for you to go get all the bugs out of it. And then when it's perfected, then I'll do it in Philadelphia or New York. Others, others feel differently about it, right? So we like to be at the cutting edge. We think it's, uh, you know, early adopters. We think sometimes uh, that gives us a little bit of advantage and, and not afraid to, to make some mistakes along the way too. But again, early on, it was, you know, we had the mindset, we are in the Silicon Valley, we have to go try it. And then now we're kind of, I, I like the approach now this way because it's, a little bit more strategic, a little bit more targeted um, that works for us. Um, so, Jim, as somebody that, um, well, you've been in this position for a long time, you've seen different technologies come and go. Um, and when it came time um, to start partnering with Cumulo, what, what was it for you that, um, what was the impetus for, for choosing us? What was the the, the I top can't take one or two things for you that that were like it that you know because those, those are big decisions yeah um for me it was my it department i can't i can't take credit for it. uh the and, and this is what i would tell the folks that are out there uh trust those guys and gals right they said a hey, jim and team this is where we think we like these these guys and gals for this reason we have this we have this problem Storage again was the biggest issue, and how can we now phase into that? They did all the homework. I have to give it. I get so what I so the credit to them. What I'll also tell you is that 
IT professionals today in this industry, in sports and entertainment, are, are so much more important than they've ever been. Mm -hmm. Because like security, if, as I started to tell you, they touch everything. What piece of a, a name a company, name an operation, name a venue, a stadium, whatever, that IT is not involved in almost every aspect of your daily life? You're not gonna you're not gonna find one. There it's every in everything we do, they are a part of it. Parking, transportation, guest services, sponsorship, grounds crew, we're looking at weather stations, you're looking at the everything has to start with data uh, and and bandwidth. And if we don't have that, uh, it's gonna affect your operation. So these guys were high on you. Pri right off the gate, primarily because what you're able to do is free up what they needed badly, and that was space. And so now they're able to do more uh, with less in, in many cases. And sometimes in this environment, uh, you, you got to find a way to do that. And you guys helped us a lot. Well, we're incredibly, you know, proud of the partnership and what the way that we like to work is deeply partner with customers and get into the, the real work. Um, so instead of just dropping something off and say, call, call us if you need us, we like getting involved in working. And, and the, the main reason for that, I mean, first of all, I think it creates a, a great uh, customer experience, but for us, the big deal is that we get to learn real fast. Um, and what we've seen is spending time with customers like you that are forward leaning, um, you know, gives us a glimpse of what might be coming. And then we get to direct our roadmap and our engineers to building the next thing in, in anticipation of that. Um, and that creates a really great virtuous cycle, I think, for, for both sides. You, you had mentioned a few minutes ago, you know, this thing that vendors do where it's these different modules and they're sort of overselling me. We made a decision early on at a company to to anchor everything that we do on around radical simplicity. Um, and, and the idea there was that IT folks, to your point that you just made, are have their roles have become incredibly important and the demands on them are very high and finding them and keeping them is difficult. And I don't know if you're experiencing that. Oh, well, every, it, and every facet of the industry, you're absolutely right. It, it's really tough. And so what, what we believe um, this idea around radical simplicity is if you can make their lives easier, um, they'll like you a lot more. And yes, there's always some propeller head somewhere that, you know, loves to massively geek out and, and, and get into the details of stuff. But, but by, and, and, and by the way, we've got some of those folks on our side that like to interact, but by and large, what we hear from the IT practitioners, like, Hey, I don't want to have to think about it. I want your technology to do the work for me. Right. Um, and then that that makes its way all the way to the like commercially how we work. We we made a decision early on that any feature we create and we create them all the time is automatically included in the subscription you've already bought. And wow. and then that way we're not sort of forcing customers to have, well either nickel and diming or forcing them to use something but not the other thing because they they only want to use part of it and they don't quite know. We just want them to get the most out of what we've built. Um, so hopefully that resonates with you. Oh, there's no doubt. I, let me just tell you, you guys got to remember, you do this every day, all day, right? I don't, I don't need to be the expert in that piece, right? I already have experts on my side that are doing it. So if I can trust you as a partner to be able to deliver a portion of the business for us, we're going to do that, right? That's what a partnership is. If you're, a, I don't, you, you use two words, a vendor and partnership. Uh, we, we favor a partnership because a vendor tells me, okay, I just bought something from him. I'm never going to see him again until the subscription is up or I got to replace the equipment. I, I, I got to be honest with you. That's so eighties and nineties. I don't want to deal with that. I want to be, I want to, I, I want you to need me. I want, I want to be needed, but, the, but at the same time, um, I don't want the headaches associated with it. I want to be able to pick up the phone and say, listen, I've got this issue. Can you, can you help us with this? Absolutely. Right. At the same time, I want to be able to know that as a trusted partner, you also have my interests at heart. And for you to be able to understand what that means, I got to let you into my world a little bit. I got to understand. I got to, I got to help you help me. Right. And that's what a partnership does. And I think that's what a lot of times, uh, 
you know, we get too busy um, that we don't focus on that. It's like anything at home, right? It's, it's you know, the, the when you think about it, how much time do we sometimes spend with our, our loved ones when we're in this, they get forgotten about, they get slighted sometimes, right? A partnership, you don't feel that way. And so um, I think that's where we really try to focus on it. And I think you guys have, it's resonated with me. I appreciate it uh, from the get-go. I know our IT department has too. And so it's like the media. If those guys are happy and, and, and not hungry, uh, then you're like, they write nicer stories about you, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, and you've given me a couple tidbits on the home front too, between facing down those, you said Thanksgiving tables are, there's always some disagreement. And if you extrapolate that to 70,000 fans, there's even more. So I embracing myself for Thanksgiving next week and then uh, making sure I keep up the partnership stuff at home. Hey, ju just, um, I, I think, one one topic, and I know I'm jumping around a lot, but this is actually um, interesting for this particular world. Is um, you know we're we're the data layer, um, but the world of video surveillance. There's a couple massive service service providers in that space. Um, um, there's organizations like Genetech and and Milestone, and um, maybe maybe I'll ask kind of a two parter. Which, if you don't mind sharing, which of those um, do you use? Either of those, first of all. We're a Genetech house, yeah. We're a Genetech house. And how important is it? I and mean, we've done deep integrations with Genetech. How important is is that part of the solution for you where you know that these two technologies already work together before you bought them? Well, listen, I mean, when we when we first designed the building in the stadium, we had, you know, our, our engineers and we had consultants come on and we went through all of those. I mean, it was seven, eight, probably eight, nine years ago now, right? The building's been open for seven. So we were at that a year or two prior to uh, opening the, the building. So a lot went into, a lot went into it. I'm not saying that, you know, Gen Genentech is the only system you can have and, you know, uh, because obviously others work, right? Which is, we chose that for, you know, reasons down, you know, seven, eight years ago. The fact that they can communicate with each other is a huge plus, right? The last thing you want to do is start adding on different layers. And, and now this one's not talking to that one. And, and, and you're having, you know, trouble integrating systems. That's the worst that you can, that's, that's where you get a whole bunch of siloed systems that down the road no longer work. And you're quite frankly, you're putting at people at risk. You're putting your, your, opportun your opportunities at risk, your organization at risk. And that's one thing that we try to be is risk averse. So we're trying to solve issues, not create them. That's why I start talking to you about how it's important that that partnership works. So you understand how it, how it goes. Video surveillance. Here, I'll give you a perfect uh, with video surveillance and facial recognition, for example. Bay Area, not real hot on facial recognition for a number of reasons. One of the reasons I'm not quite there yet is because of the massive amount of data storage that it takes. Imagine imagery, you know, 70,000 images every game, or at least 70 for, you can think about that a lot more than 70 based on the number of touch points, right? But it has to solve an issue for me. And so facial recognition, for example, um, it, it has some great things, right? But I'm, but I'm looking for, in this particular case, the bad guys or gals that are coming through 70,000. The mass majority of people uh, are law abiding, fan code of conduct abiding citizens and personnel that I don't, I don't know that I need any of that, right? I can use line time in a line without knowing that it's Jim or Bill, I can use that data in a different way that's much more su successful than it is having know that Bill's standing in line or Jim's standing in line. Um, what it was originally tasked for is to be able to find bad guys, right? But you got to have that storage. Well, if I can't connect to the bad guy data storage system, i.e. with public safety, then it doesn't work for me as much as I would like it to, right? So that's one of the reasons why, in my viewpoint, there is, here's a perfect example of being able to invest in something other than the latest and greatest technology if I'm only going to focus on a small population. So I want to I want to go bigger, brighter, faster, stronger, as opposed to, you know, just focusing on a handful of, you know, potential issues. There's other ways that you can create mechanisms around that less than 1% of the population. So, but all of that has to work with within the system. And if your systems aren't communicating with each other, 
uh, you, know, you have an issue. I, I do see and contend that nowadays, uh, almost everything we do is, is, and people more readily available with open APIs, right? In the past, it was, you know, I'm, I'm, I, you're not getting in. Well, if that's the case, you're not getting into my building. So, and, and that was a very easy decision for us. Yeah. Um, just to pick up on a few of those themes, um, you know, we, we try to pick the markets where we know that there's going to be an enormous amount of unstructured data that needs to be managed. And like in the case of video surveillance, we try to spend, do the real work and spend time with the major vendors in that space and do the testing to make sure it's going to work before it ever gets to a customer's site. Um, because again, if you prioritize radical simplicity, you say, well, I, I'm going to do that so that the IT practitioner doesn't have to. Um, that the, the other thing you mentioned, and I think it's just a curiosity, maybe not so much on tech, is just this um, contention we have in society between uh, security and privacy. And I know that comes up all the time. Um, and, and it sounds like you're being very thoughtful about how to balance those things. Um, what we've observed in our business, though, is that there, um, folks really do want to be secure. And that's why, um, whether it's at the stadiums or for law enforcement or um, universities, and, and now, surprisingly, um, oh, by the way, air, airports, train mm -hmm. stations, et cetera, but even um, K through 12 school districts have become kind of rapid adopters of this. And so I, I, I'm not a public policy expert and I, I won't predict how that's gonna go. Um, we just wanna make sure that we can provide the most economical and then secure system so that at a minimum, um, bad folks can't get access to the, the, the data when they, when they shouldn't be allowed. And so we've, we've spent an enormous amount of time making sure that the data is all encrypted and that access controls are strong and aligned with companies, um, how the company wants to align their policies. Um, but that for sure, I think would, is going to be an interesting public policy discussion that continues to evolve. Well, to, to be honest with you, I think they're so, they're so behind the, the eight ball, it's late. Um, that's a perfect example of where your technology should be placed. Uh, there's, no, there's no stronger and more important safety requirement than our kids and our kids are at school for eight hours a day you know and sometimes more than that right um but you know security is you know is a to me the way i look at security it's layered right you don't it's not you can't just um hey i got a new security camera system so we're good we, we don't need any no no that's not how it works it needs to be whether it's ushers and i'll just keep to the stadium for now Ushers are trained on security thing, what to look for too, right? Parking attendants. How about janitorial personnel? How about teachers in the schools now, right? I know people, teachers just, I don't want to get too political, but teachers just want to teach. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, you have a little bit more responsibility. That So do administrators, so do parking attendants, so do cafeteria workers. I mean, there's all these different things that if your entire ecosystem is a little bit better connected, you have a greater opportunity to be able to communicate. That's where the, the whole see something, say something campaign came out of it, right? It wasn't just a security guard's job. It was anything. It was, you know, what we do to an engineer, and I, I say to the engineer, hey, listen, I don't know your shop better than you do. So if there's something in your shop that's out of whack, you've got to say something. Same thing with the teacher. If you don't, something's in your classroom you don't see, or the cafeteria worker or the janitorial, these are all extremely important people. If you don't empower them to do what's right and give them the resources to do it and the technology to support them, then those three things I talked to you about earlier, people, process, and technology, they're not in harmony and they're out of whack. To me, you get that, you're, you're rolling down, the, you're rolling down the, the path in four solid wheels. Hey Jim, um, um, we're we're always um, eager to continue to innovate, and we never um, will back down from a challenge. Just broadly speaking, um, what, what would be like the one or two things at the top of your wish list in, in terms of how you'd like to see a partner like us serve you? Give us a, give us a challenge. 
Oh man, you're putting me on the spot here. Um, I thought you were going to put me like on a cold ice challenge, a cold cold ice water challenge for a second. I'm like, you're not allowed to say free. Yeah, I, I can't. I can't say for free. Uh, no, no. Look, I think I would just tell you this: um, as you continue to evolve, as you continue to uh, illustrate your your viewpoints share them with us right yep. don't don't be afraid hey, hey jim i i don't know that this works for you or not uh but but here and it's not so much a sales pitch it's just a it's collaboration right it's hey i, I don't know that we saw this in a different industry gosh can you imagine so that's how ai predictive analytics all this other stuff is starting to make its way into areas that we've never even thought of i i, I gave you an instance with disinfecting from hospitals now that are in stadiums. So if we can open up kind of that uh, blooming onion, so to speak, uh, or flower of different use cases, I, that would be great. That would be a challenge that I would say, please come to us and talk to us about these things. The same thing has to be for the operator. If I don't tell you that I have some challenges that I'm kind of focused on, you may not be as focused as you could be to help us. So I think if when you're looking at a true partnership, if we can have that um, bilateral communication back and forth with one another, I think we're going to be better off. I, I tell you here, a challenge for me right now is that I'm, I want to know, I mean, GPS has it, uh, but there's some, you know, mapping that I'm kind of focused on and where our personnel and where our resources are mm -hmm. throughout the day. Not because I want to be big brother, but I want to be as efficient as possible for when I do get that medical call, what resources I can dispatch as quickly as possible. So we're working through some of that stuff. Um, communication to me is always, I'm always excited to hear about new ways to communicate, right? Right now it's phone, radio, text, cell phone, um, different languages that you're having uh, and, and you're communicating with different guests that, are, that may or may not speak English. We're looking at different types of things like that. But um, to me, it's, it's resource management is what I'm looking at uh, for, for many reasons, but because you talked about it earlier, keeping and maintaining employees, that you know, work power, workforce is important for me. So uh, all of those things are things that we're looking for. I'm not quite sure that you're going to be able to solve all those for us, but maybe there's something in there that triggers a thought process that you have. Well, challenge... Uh... Um, is totally accepted in terms of the collaboration. Um, and in fact, that was one of the reasons for jumping on with you today is, um, is being able to share real life experiences about what practitioners are facing and how they're solving the challenges. We have a program called the Cumulo Community and everything at Cumulo has to start with a Q. So it's community with a Q. Um, <laughs> um, but we're what we find is... Uh, there are instances where customers sort of their use of Cumulo, they see it as a strategic advantage, but more, much more often than not um, in the IT community, collaborating and sharing ideas is, is a good thing because it, it, it saves a lot of people time and it, and, and uh, it allows us all to move uh, more quickly. Jim, I, I have to confide to you that, um, you know, we're headquartered in Seattle and I'm a life, like a diehard Seahawks fan. Um, and, um, but six months ago when we started the partnership, I became a 49ers fan too. So I, um, and that was a big change. I even had to sit down my two daughters and explain to them that we were, we were making a family movement here. <laughs> <laughs> that's big, Bill, that's big. I mean, to, to, to be able to, I mean, that's one of the bigger rivalries we have in, amongst us, but what I would tell you is if we were all just Seattle Seahawks fans, or if we were all just 49er fans, it'd be a boring, bland place. <laughs> uh, so I, I do appreciate the fact that, uh, that you confided and, and came clean on that. Uh, you know, listen, I, what I would tell you is this, stay true to your first love. Uh, but if, uh, if you can support us too, that would be great. Uh, if I can put a divide in your family at Thanksgiving and Christmas, uh, because the 49ers are hopefully doing better than the Seahawks, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't mind that, um, but listen, I, I do appreciate that. Uh, it it is important, uh, but it's not mandatory. I can tell you that much. We 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 have we we know that there's other people that's that we we do business with that aren't just forty fans. But a great story, man. I appreciate hearing that. Well, listen, I I want to be respectful of your time. I I know you've got uh, 
a ton going on. We probably have time for a question from the audience. If, if someone, if we haven't covered something that someone's dying to ask, um, you can jump on chat. Um, yeah, I did not want to interrupt. This is such a free flowing conversation and you've naturally answered most of the questions, but um, we did have one. I think we have time for one last question before we wrap in three minutes. Um, so Jen, this one's for you. What is the most crucial role that IT plays in game day operations and fan experience in your perspective? Well, I, I would argue that um, it's probably life safety, all right? And so, um, and it's a multi-finger approach, right? So can you imagine all of the different systems if I didn't have them? Um, I wouldn't be able to potentially put the resources. And let me just give you a quick an example of it, right? So if I didn't have the bandwidth, let's start there. If I didn't have a DAS system, which our IT department helps with, right? I couldn't make as many phone calls as quickly as possible, right? If I didn't have the radio systems in the stadium, which is all also IT based, I couldn't do that. If I didn't have the text message and the handphone capability, I, I couldn't do that neither, right? If I didn't have the video surveillance, I wouldn't be able to provide a, an extra coverage from some of those folks. So they touch it all um, from a life safety perspective. Um, and they and nobody um, understood that as much, I think, going into this, this new generation. We wanted to be, in terms of stadiums, and Dr. York, our, our owner, said this to us once, I want to be the first of a generation, not the last of, of one. And so he and Jed and their family, uh, the York family really gave us the, the support to be able to do that. And so when it came time for me to say, hey, I wanna put in magnetometers and be one of the first stadiums that put magnetometers in place and I need the, the technological infrastructure to do that, he was there for us. And so um, I would say that, I, I would say, more so than ever, uh, IT is, is becoming um, more and more prevalent in these buildings and, and they should get a lot more credit uh, than they deserve. I'm real thankful for them. Great, that's Definitely a great answer. Unsung heroes, and, um, but, but these are our people, so we, we um, know them well. well I just, it just, you know, it's like, like I told you about family, right? It's, um, it's, you sometimes, you don't mean to. Uh, we sometimes take our families for granted because we're so busy working integration and that's what operations folks are, right? They're in the trenches and logistics and janitorial folks and all these folks get taken advantage of. Nobody really understands what they do. They just know that when the job isn't done, then people get pissed, right? Or they get upset or they get uh, hey, my phone doesn't work. Oh, the power doesn't work. Oh, the, the, the room's dirty. The stadium's you know, all these different things. And they just think that that chair and that table and that room got cleaned or set up automatically. The IT, the part, oh, your phone just connects and it just works and you're, you know, all these things, right? So they sometimes are those unsung heroes, um, not in my world. I wanna, I wanna pay tribute to them and pay tribute to all of you guys and be thankful for what it is that they do for us that makes our life a lot easier. That's a great note to end on, Jim. And I 100% agree. Morgan, any any final uh, thoughts as we wrap up here? Yeah, thank you both so much. This was super enlightening. Jim, always love to hear from you. And thank you to all of our IT unsung heroes who joined us today. I dropped an email address in the chat. If you want any sort of follow-up at all, you have any questions, you want to learn more about Cumulo, feel free to email us at content at cumulo.com. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you, Bill. Thank you, Jim. Have a great day. You're here. Have a great Thanksgiving, everybody. Be well. Bye now. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks so much.